Steve, we are finally to day three of the Affordable Flying Expo. It's been a really educational experience with its highs and its lows and this and that. But one of the highs was watching you taxi in after what had to be a somewhat elongated trip <laughs> from Colorado to Florida, open cockpit. We are so pleased to have you here, but I got to ask, tell me about the trip. Well, let's see. I haven't done the final tally, but I was in the air a total of right around 15 hours. I think a little under 15 hours. By my math, I was averaging about 103 knots. And that's a true average. That's starting the timer at the beginning of takeoff roll, ending the timer at the end of the landing roll. So that's climb and everything else. I stopped for fuel, I think seven times. Usually that was maybe just over half the fuel burn out of the tank. I could have gone further, but part of the fun of a trip like this is stopping at airports. You know, we have a saying, when you've seen one airport, you've seen one airport. They're all different. They all have their cast of characters. They all have their personalities. And for the most part, there's always interesting and fun, nice people to meet. Now, you departed from Grand Junction, Colorado? Grand Junction, Colorado. What was your highest altitude on the trip? 14,000. I came over the Continental Divide around Monarch Pass. You know, that was room to spare, and I was not uh, taxing the airplane altitude performance. I had plenty of, of uh, altitude performance left. I was taxing my warmth level a little bit <laughs> because it was tw the outside air temp was 21F, and it is a co open cockpit airplane. So I had on long johns, I had on wool socks, I had on leather jacket, leather flying helmet with fleece. And I'm not going to tell you that at 21 degrees I was toasty, but I would say anytime I got to where the outside air temp was high 30s or maybe pushing 40, then very comfortable. It's not breezy in the cockpit, so that makes a big difference. Little machine like this navigating itself away across country, how did you fly it? What would you use for navigation? I use ForeFlight. We have room for an iPad mini right in the middle of the panel, and that was my map and my moving map. Favorite airport along the way? Hmm. Well, I would say Hot Springs, Arkansas, because I had a little bit of a maintenance issue there, and there were some people there that were just extremely helpful. They sent me pull the airplane in the hangar and, and uh, use their tools, you know, which is awful hard to beat and, and also not atypical of general aviation. Not at all. And then maybe after that, um, Geneva, Alabama because I pulled up to the gas pump right at dusk and a very friendly fellow was, came up behind me in a Colt and he just insisted that I put my airplane in the tea hanger with his Colt, which I did because the wings fold. He and his hangar mates, you know, transported me around and made sure I was well fed and taken care of. And again, that's, that's why going into small airports is so much fun because the people you meet are, they're just wonderful people. So, final morning, slogging it into Lakeland, it had to feel good. Well, it did feel good. It was, first of all, it was fun to glimpse the, the bay, see salt water for the first time on the trip. And then I just, you know, fairly much followed the coast around. The scenery is spectacular. The fresh air feels great. And, and it also feels good to be closing in on the end of a, of a long trip. I was excited to get here, so. I bet you are, but, but uh, mostly because you don't have to take it back. It's already sold. <laughs> it's sold, that's right. Yeah, yeah that, was part of, that was part of the decision process to come this far was we had a, a buyer close by here, and so killed two birds with one stone. But well, how many have been out the door so far? This is, I believe, the ninth one we're delivering. Wow. I took one to a customer in Nevada last week. We're not promising that we will hand deliver these airplanes, you know, forever. But but here in the first couple dozen, yeah. you no, know, it's our intention to hand deliver and make sure we have a smooth handoff to the, you know, the new owners. Make sure any of their questions are answered. And current price, sixty nine five for at least the first twenty units, and we're honoring that. As I said, this is number nine. Right now. We're not committing to a price a year down the road or anything like that. But I would say this, at the moment, we're not nervous about that price point. 
Well, Steve, first of all, we thank you for coming to the Affordable Flying Expo, the first one we've ever done. And we're looking so much forward to seeing you grow and go through this industry, but we can't thank you enough for being a part of this because you made it. Well, we're glad to be here. It's time to upgrade your power plant to the first FAA certified clean sheet engine design in over 60 years. Delta Hawk's jet fuel powered liquid cooled turbocharged engine produces turbine performance at 40% better fuel efficiency of typical reciprocating engines, while also achieving exceptional reliability and significant reduction in cost of ownership. Reserve your engine package today at deltahawk.com.